So uh, first of all, I, I would like to thank uh, all the organizers and um, in particular uh, Irasu and Giuseppe for uh, the contact uh, I had with them. Um, and I must say I'm really glad to be here with uh, all of you and to to have the possibility to, to see all these great presentations. And um, well, uh, as Livio uh, rightly pointed out, uh, Notre Dame Scientific Action has clearly uh, highlighted how much the management of heritage data is a multidisciplinary issue. And um, for my part, uh, I explored this issue through visualization of uh, multidimensional data and uh, it's uh, what I'm going to talk about uh, today. So, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to uh, make it clear that we never target 3D just for 3D's sake, just because it's fun. Um, in fact, for it, heritage sciences, uh, which uh, I think absolutely need uh, an effective gateway to deal with, with uh, this uh, increasingly massive and complex data collections, 3D visualization is a major challenge, both uh, in terms of interpretability and usability. And uh, Livio has clearly shown that uh, technologically, uh, if we use many tools together, we reach a point where we, we are able to collect all the digital data produced all along the restoration sites, to describe them, to enrich them, that's to say, to to create a significant corpus of resources, all related to the very same cultural heritage objects, in our case, Notre Dame. But uh, this incredibly rich corpus is also uh, incredibly complex because we are dealing with extremely heterogeneous data. Uh, we are facing various temporal states of the monuments, uh, various uh, areas of interest, various scales, uh, among the data collected, we can find uh, point clouds before or after fire, tens of thousands of images, uh, as well as uh, 3D reconstruction hypotheses. Uh, in, this case, uh, in this case, it's a uh, uh, reconstruction of the rough structure. Also 3D meshes, uh, technical or free hand drawings, chemical analysis, specialized sound samples, and so on. And most of all, all these representations of the same cultural heritage object, in fine, convey quite different meanings to scientists with uh, sometimes very different uh, disciplinary backgrounds. So, uh, I think we can see the importance of exploration and manipulations, since uh, in the lack of a suitable tool, this diversity considerably reduces our capacity to cross the views between actors uh, in a highly multidisciplinary context. So uh, it seemed quite natural for us to uh, refocus on uh, what unites all these resources from this corpus, uh, in fact, their relationship to uh, Notre Dame itself. And uh, with this idea in mind, 3D visualization is most likely intuitive enough to become a powerful tool for a multidisciplinary exploration. So, um, the tool you can see here is a 3D web viewer that we developed uh, for uh, Notre Dame Scientific Action. So basically, it's accessible from a simple browser to all the project members. And the aim is to centralize and specialize in a common, common uh, reference system all the data related to the cathedral, whether they were produced before or after the fire. And, um, the key word is really to make easier the access to the data and knowledge produced all along the restoration and to allow the cross visualization of all the elements produced by different working groups uh, with the aim to help to identify potential correlations between different analyses, between different observations and so on. And of course, uh, each element, uh, we have several thousands of uh, of elements, so each one can be displayed or hidden freely by users, but to simplify the navigation, uh, the cathedral space has been segmented into different volumes, uh, following the nomenclatures of uh, spaces and uh, shapes uh, in use for the restoration. So, 
for example, a user can choose to display only uh, all the elements concerning the choir, or more specifically, uh, the tribunes of the apps, or even more specifically, the tier one span. In this way, uh, we can first offer a simple filter driven by users' interest. So, it, it's just a simple example, but, uh, and here it's only a filter by spatial proximity, but basically, the very same idea uh, could be uh, applied to propose very different filtering strategies. For example, uh, it could be applied to all the metadata to build this time a filter by documentary or even semantic proximity. Um, I don't know, for example, if we want to display only elements produced by a specific person at a specific time or representing a specific phenomenon. Well, um, I won't go into too much detail about the functionalities, but simply we worked hand in hand with uh, the users to develop it gradually as a restoration project and as the scientific research on Notre Dame progressed. And, and I think uh, it's quite essential. But I really want to uh, emphasize that when we talk about uh, digital data and visualization, we are absolutely not talking about uh, trying to replace reality. In fact, it's quite the opposite because it's all about uh, trying to bring together all the benefits of IT's computing capabilities and those of uh, human analysis. Um, for example, what you see here uh, is uh, a work done with the Stone Working Group, uh, whose goal was to realize this uh, anastylosis of the collapsed transverse arch uh, in the nave. So initially, uh, as you can see on the right, uh, they worked uh, directly on the work site by moving uh, physically the stones uh, to test various configurations. But uh, first, uh, it was tedious because uh, because of the weight of the stones, because of their lead contamination, uh, and simply because of their different storage locations. And also, uh, it was not really sustainable. I think. Uh, uh, all these morning very interesting presentations clearly show uh, how much uh, the continuous integration of data constantly uh, um, calls into question the state of knowledge and the stated hypothesis. So it's typically this, in this kind of context that, uh, in fact, uh, hybridization provides a considerable help. Here, to simplify the work, we just developed a tailor-made tool for testing stones pos stone positions on a theoretical model. And it's, uh, it helps to visually uh, assess the viability of a given hypothesis while always uh, keeping in mind the real object and all these specific features. Because ultimately, uh, it's this back and forth between real and virtual that uh, help to formulate or confirm or also refute assumptions. Um, of course, the very same approach could be applied to many other study cases, uh, on, even uh, on Notre Dame, for example, uh, it could be applied on Notre Dame structure remains. But, uh, sorry, let me just move to this one. Okay, the main problem is uh, that this kind of approach puts us in a, an even more complex situation because uh, now we also have to manage uh, different temporal states of the same object in the same spe special reference system. Here we have two positions. Uh, we have a post-fire position, basically where the stone was found, uh, was found uh, after the fire and also a pre-fire position, which is uh, the anastylosis hypothesis. And in fact, uh, beyond all the IT aspects related to interaction modalities, which are of course a big challenge, uh, this kind of multi-temporal data mainly raises questions about uh, the gap between two known space, uh, states. For example, um, to produce uh, the animation you can see here, we just worked by interpolation. I mean that we use an algorithm to ex estimate a possible trajectory between two known positions. But you can see that this trajectory clearly uh, 
doesn't correspond to any physical reality. Uh, here you just seen uh, that the, the stone crosses over a wall. No. So in the end, uh, the interpolation adds uncertainty, where on the opposite, we seek to provide reliability. So clearly, uh, we are confronted to a, a big paradox. And uh, as Livio sh has shown, uh, we are accumulating, uh, what we are accumulating is not just representations of the geometry or the appearance of Notre Dame, but knowledge. And in other words, uh, it's just not, uh, it's not just a matter of being able to manipulate 3D data, it's most of all a matter of defining new mechanisms that make the meaning this data conveys for different scientific communities accessible and shareable. So the, this example you, you just seen is basically just a test of a query strategy. Uh, and the aim here is to show which blocks are engraved with a cross shape. It's quite simple. But behind this apparently very simple demo, uh, there is in fact a great deal of enrichment work aimed at inter integrating knowledge about objects into digital representations of these objects through metadata or uh, semantic annotations. And it's precisely our biggest challenge. How can we go from digital data to multidisciplinary knowledge? This problem is exactly uh, the motivation behind IOLI, which is a platform dedicated to uh, collaborative uh, semantic annotation for the documentation of heritage objects, which is developed uh, since many years at the MAP laboratory. I think. Uh, Maybe I have not the time to, to show uh, uh, all the, this tool, but um, I won't go into too much detail. Simply, uh, it's an environment that allows to, to make uh, multidisciplinary semantic annotations. And uh, here, here uh, you can see that all these annotations uh, can be loaded directly into a 3D web viewer, Notre Dame 3D web viewer, which is which also contains all the project specialized resources, including pre-fire point clouds, analysis samples, simulations, and so on. And so uh, all these 2D and 3D annotation can easily be superimposed with uh, another kinds of resources to cross-reference information, to track changes over time, and so on. And to date, um, my colleague uh, Roxane Roussel have collected more than 9,000 uh, specialized semantic annotations according to different topics, masonry, stained glass, history, and so on, and most of all following the um, diagnosis made by the architects in charge of the restoration. Um, the one you see here are annotations concerning the choir chapels. And what's interesting is that from there we well we'll able to be to provide new exploration and inter interrogation tools uh, that can take benefit of uh, all the quantitative and qualitative information accumulated within the very same environment. And uh, I think on this point there are a lot of great things to explore. Um, for example, we are currently uh, seeking to enable multi-criteria queries like this one, this one you can uh, read it here, and um, it's just a fictive example, but um, I think it's interesting because it gives uh, an idea of uh, the complexity of this uh, issue. Because uh, such, a such a question in fact, includes several criteria for, of very different nature. First, we have a documentary criterion with any resource, which gives us an indication of the file types expected in output. Here, any types. And then, semantics, since, since uh, all the extracted resources must be linked in one way or another to the term vestige. And it uh, clearly implies being able to define precisely what this, this concept refers to and which concepts are close or even similar to it. 
And then uh, this geometric criterion uh, add complexity because it gives us limits on the dimensions of the projection of the vestige in a 3D reference system, which necessarily implies being able to set up a link between semantic assignment and a geometry. In our case, uh, we do that um, through annotation. And also a special criterion uh, with, with a precision on the relevant span, which implies being able to define a nomenclature for space and shapes, and also to know all the hierarchical relations between all the elements resulting from this division of the space. And uh, also, uh, we have to be able to control uh, the special referencing of the corpus elements, and it's not trivial. And finally, uh, we are confronted to a temporal criterion, which requires several things, but mostly uh, to be able to date all the resources, um, which raises uh, important questions of granularity, because we have to be able to do it in an harmonized way and to rely on a shared and uh, stable temporal division. So, to do so, we are currently working on structuring our data by building knowledge graphs, characterizing uh, both uh, the concepts, I mean vocabulary, spaces, forms, uh, nomenclatures, and so on, and the semantic and temporal relationships that link them together. So on the left, um, this graph shows uh, architectural vocabulary entries uh, and their semantic and hierarchical relationships. On the middle, uh, it shows the special uh, relationships between the, the volumes uh, of the cathedral and according to the nomenclature uh, provided by architects. And uh, on the right, uh, it shows the hierarchical relationships between semantic annotations from I, uh, the IOLI diagnosis uh, annotation. And I'll conclude here, but Better said that these two images represent exactly the very same data set, uh, the spatialized semantic annotations of uh, the diagnosis. That means that by using different ways of structuring, uh, structuring and representing information, on the left it's more based on geometry uh, and on the right uh, on semantic, we can start to consider completely new exploration methods which can exploit uh, geometric, visual, semantic, and temporal characteristics to uh, establish new links between data and always improve, improve user experience in navigation and exploration. With that in mind, I think it's uh, easy to see how much this challenge uh, of converging data, information, and knowledge is, uh, most of all, uh, a multidimensional visualization exercise. I'll stop here. I hope I haven't been too long. Thank you for your attention, and please feel free to ask any questions.